Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to make a hopefully quick video just to talk about uh, looping in Excel. Uh, so looping is a sort of core concept in computer programming. If you're an Excel user, you've probably only come across it in the context of VBA, if at all. Uh, but basically the idea is just looping just means doing something over and over again a certain number of times uh, or until, until some condition is met. Uh, so I just started off with a, a kind of blank blank grid with the uh, with all the grid lines filled in heavily because this is actually how as a you know first year computer science student I was introduced to uh, to some of the basic concepts of loops was with uh, a little like robot walking around a virtual world that had uh, you know a 2d uh, array of cells just like an Excel grid um, and so if you think about you know basically two two simple kinds of loops one loop is just do something a certain number of times um, you know, it's like a, a for loop if you're doing VBA for i equal to 1 up to 10. In other words, do this set of instructions 10 times. Or it might be, you know, for each for each sheet in the tab or for each element in the list or whatever, do something. So again, simply in, you know, robot walking around a grid terms, that might be walk n steps forward. So, you know, or walk n steps, let's say, down the grid here. So five steps, 10 steps, whatever number of steps. Um, and then the second kind is what I think of as a sort of open-ended loop uh, where you don't know how many steps you're going to have to take. And that is, you know, from a given starting point, walk until you get to the edge of the grid. So, you know, if you start here, that's going to take you 16 steps. But if you start here, it's going to take you four steps and so on. But the whole point is that you don't know how many steps it's going to take. Now, like I said, the, the sort of purview of that either of those kinds of looping in uh, in Excel up until pretty recently was just within VBA you know if you're in grid then you know you're you're an accountant or something and then if you crack open VBA then you're a programmer uh, but obviously a big big feature of kind of modern Excel that's been rolled out in the last couple of years is kind of blurring the bounds between those two a little bit so what I want to show you today is how to do a couple of uh, a couple of kinds of loops uh, using the lambda function um, and just start off with a very, very high level principle. Let's say we want to, you know, have a program to walk n steps. Well, one way you might write the instructions for that is walk one step and then walk n minus one steps. And if you have a program that can walk n steps, then you can call the same program here. So you're basically saying, you know, program of n, then walk one step and then program of n minus one. These, these are the instructions that make up that program. Uh, and similarly, you know, walk to the wall would be, uh, you know, if I'm at the wall, stop, else step forward and walk to the wall. And you can, you know, basically turn that into a program as well. Um, I'm not going to kind of labor the pseudocode example anymore because I'm going to show you real examples in a second. So the examples I'm, I'm going to play around with, uh, actually I've uh, a bit of a giveaway that I played with this one earlier um, and then I made a video that was too verbose so I'm just going to kill some of the stuff I did earlier and redo the more interesting parts now. Um, so apologies, I left my working lines there. Uh, so let's just start with Sorry, quick background. The examples I'm going to take are uh, the It's a Sequence uh, problem from the FMWC uh, Europe battle from a little while ago. Uh, there's a couple of things at the start that are just about, you know, kind of rounding, uh, averaging and rounding numbers to form a sequence, um, which don't require any looping, so I'm not going to do those. Uh, but then I'm going to start with level four here, which is a Fibonacci style sequence. So if you haven't heard of the Fibonacci sequence, very famous uh, sequence in, in mathematics. It just starts with two ones, and then every term after that is the sum of the previous two terms. So it goes one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, and it has all kinds of remarkable, very well studied properties. Uh, here we're told we have a modified Fibonacci sequence, so we have a different uh, pair of starting terms, uh, and then you have to figure out uh, where it gets to after n terms. So in this case, for example, we start with 2 and 18, and you have to figure out where it gets to after 7 terms. So because this, the number is small, I can just do this. Uh, sorry, I do not want it to hash that. Uh, sorry, n134. <clears throat> uh, let me copy that across. And there we are, after seven spaces, it gets to 154, which matches the sample answer. Obviously, here you need to go much further. So we could do this by just kind of 
doing the same setup as this and just spreading it out to 100 columns or so, which is which is what it wants here. But then we'd have a whole lot of empty columns doing something we don't particularly want. So let's write that recursive function instead. So I'm going to uh, go to the advanced formula environment, uh, because if you're writing a, a lambda, especially a recursive lambda, oh, it didn't acknowledge the things I deleted. So that's slightly annoying. Uh, but anyway, oh yeah, probably because I didn't hit synchronize. Okay, so I'm going to start a new one. I'm going to call it uh, fib1k. The 1k, sorry, I didn't mention, is because it's only asking us for the last, uh, it says it somewhere here, uh, the last three digits of the desired number. So in other words, it's basically the sequence modulo 1000. Uh, so we're going to say, whoops, uh, I'm going to say lambda. So lambda just means give me the function that takes what arguments. So the arguments are going to be the first term. So I'll just call that t underscore one underscore because t1 is a cell reference, so you can't give that as a name, t underscore two, and n. <clears throat> uh, and then think about this as the, you know, walk n steps example. Uh, so I'm going to say if, um, if n is less than three, in other words, if I want one of the first two terms, then just take that term. So I'm going to say choose, so in this case, n is either one or two, so choose n t1 t2. So choose just means, uh, you know, if this value n is 1, take the first term. If this value n is 2, take the second term. Uh, and otherwise, we carry on. I'm just going to space this out a little bit because this hover text can get in the way when you're writing here. <clears throat> and then if that's not the case, then I want uh, fib1k of uh, t2. So I'm basically moving along the sequence. So my second term becomes my new first term. Uh, and then my new second term becomes uh, t1 plus t2, and I'm going to take that mod 1000 uh, so that I have the right divided. Now it's underlining here to, oh yeah, sorry, that's just telling me I don't have the right number of arguments yet, but that's fine because I have to add one more. Uh, and then the last argument is going to be n minus 1. So in other words, if I want to go seven steps starting from 2 and 18, that's the same as going six steps starting from the next step in the sequence, which is 18 and 20. <clears throat> and I just do that until I get down to a 2, and then I take the second term of wherever I've got to in the sequence. Uh, and now that I've done that, I can kind of tidy that up a bit, hit tick, uh, and you'll see... Uh, Sorry, it's slightly cut off by my face smiling at you down here, but anyway, uh, you'll see that once you've kind of hit confirm, it lays it out in this kind of nice uh, readable way. So then I just hit refresh and we'll test it out. So we'll say fib1k of term one, term two, and n, and hopefully that gives me, yes, 154. And I've set it up with conditional formatting here. So if these all turn green, that means we're good. Okay. Uh, so. <clears throat> That's an example where you know the number of steps to take. Now let's look at a, a different one. Um, no, yeah, well, these are all... I had filled this one in with a formula that no longer exists. Uh, but I remember that the answer to that one was supposed to be 7. Uh, so this one is based on what they call the Hailstone sequence. I know it as the Colat sequence and mostly associated with this XKCD cartoon about mathematicians obsessively doing sequences, which... <clears throat> of course, I don't relate to ahem. Um, the hailstone or colat sequence is a sequence where you start with a number, and if it's odd, then you multiply it by three and add one. If it's even, you divide by two. Again, this is a kind of piece of famous mathematics. Uh, it is widely believed that the sequence always terminates in the cycle four two one four two one four two one, uh, but it hasn't been uh, hasn't been proved. It's an open question. Uh, so again. This is this is more like the walk until you get to a wall than it is the walk n steps because you don't know how many steps it's going to take you, but the setup is still very much the same. So uh, you know, in in both cases, you're going to. So let me just come down to this uh, this other one I had. I'll just expand out here so it's a little easier to see. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong one. This is the one. So in both cases, you're saying if you're in the base case, then you have some simple calculation. Uh, otherwise, you know, take a step forward and move on. So it's going to be a similar idea here. We'll just call this colats. <clears throat> uh, we'll expand it out. And that's going to be a function which takes uh, a starting number and optionally takes uh, a number of steps because I, basically I want the number of steps to kind of increase as I go along uh, until I get somewhere that I want to be. Then I'm going to say let uh, I should think of a better name, but I'm just going to call it new n. Uh, 
So we're just going to deal with the case that n is an optional function. So if it's omitted, uh, if is omitted n, then uh, 1, otherwise n. Uh, and then for the rest of the function, I'm just going to refer to new n instead of n. Uh, so then we go on from there. I'm going to say if uh, new n equals, sorry, no, if start equals 1. So in other words, if the number I'm starting from is 1, which is the equivalent of if I'm standing in front of a wall, i.e. I have already arrived at the destination, because what you want to find out is how many steps does it take to get to a 1. So if start equals 1, then I just return n. Uh, and otherwise, I and again, I'm going to put in a few more spaces here so that hover text doesn't get in my way. Otherwise, I'm going to call the function again with, now my new start is going to be if uh, is odd, my previous start. If that's odd, then three times that number plus one. Otherwise, start divided by two. So that's my first argument. And my second argument is going to be the number of steps and I just add one to that to reflect the fact that I took that step before. Now, why? oh, sorry, I'm missing a closing bracket there. That when you see that uh, sort of squiggly thing, it's telling you something is wrong with your syntax. In this case, it's that I forgot to close the bracket for the if. Uh, and now I've got too many closing brackets because I put an extra closing bracket somewhere. Uh, and I'm just going to close all these up because they're messy. Uh, I think that should be it. So I'm going to hit tick. Uh, and again, so you see, once you tick it, it's kind of laid out very neatly here. So we have a starting value, an optional n. Uh, so the, the reason the n is optional is so that I can just start with one argument, which is the number, uh, and it'll automatically assume that if you haven't given me something, then the starting step is 1. Uh, and sorry, I just realized I said I was going to then use new n all the rest of the way along, and then completely forgot to use new n all the rest of the way along. Uh, so let me fix that, because otherwise it won't behave correctly. Uh, Start was one, new n. Okay. Good. Uh, and then once you've uh, ticked it, you've got to sync it back in here before you can use it. So then let's test it out. We'll say collats of 10, 7. Good. And then we'll say collats of these. Uh, and there was a bonus question up here as well. Uh, which was, what if you start with 77,031? And if that seems oddly specific, uh, it turns out if you Google collats and this number, you will uh, find out that this is the smallest number that requires as many steps as it does, uh, which is 351 steps, so quite a few. Um, all right, so last one. Uh, oh, and I've uh, left my broken unnamed function in there again, but uh, last one quickly. Uh, so for this one, you've got, you start off with two inputs. One is a sequence of 11 digits, and the other is a number. And you have a rule that transforms one sequence of 11 digits into another sequence of 11 digits. And you apply that rule a certain number of times, which is that number there. And then you return the argument that's in the seventh position. A little bit weird. Uh, the rule that gets you from one to the next one is, for the next one, uh, each term here is the average of the two, the one above to the left and the one above to the right. Uh, and if that is rounded to the nearest integer. So here, for example, 820 and 865, the average is 842.5. So you round that to 843. Uh, but here, these two are the same parity. So the average is just straight 260. You put that there. And then at the ends, there's nothing above this to the left. So it just take 262 from there and put it there. And here at this end, there's nothing above that to the right. Uh, in the sequence, there is a cell there. Uh, so you just take the 399 from there. Now, that uh, that part is not really, uh, you know, what we're here for. Uh, so I've just pre-written a, uh, a formula for that uh, to just take the step. So I'll just do a quick, here's one I made earlier. Uh, so sequence step uh, over here, it just says it's a function that takes an array and then does this. It says count the columns in the array, so it doesn't depend on it being 11. Uh, so that's 11, the number of columns. Then give me a sequence uh, with blank first arguments, so in other words, no rows and that many columns. Uh, so it gives me, there are 11 numbers, so this sequence is just the sequence of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, and then switch uh, basically says, you know, depending on the value of sequence, if it's 1, then give me the second argument from the input array. In other words, if you're in the first position, give me that second value. And similarly, if you're in the last position, give me the second last value. And otherwise, round 
the value that you get when you add up the 2 on either side of it and divide by 2 to the nearest whole number. Uh, so just to quickly confirm that that is working, let me just clear this out. We'll say seek step uh, from here. And sure enough, that matches the 262, 843, 260, and so on across. And now that we have that function, uh, the actual um, the actual function to do this is is the easiest one of all to write. Uh, I'm just going to call it level five because this one, as far as I know, is not based on a famous piece of mathematics. So we're going to say lambda, uh, and we're going to take two arguments. We're going to take an array and a number, uh, and then what's the function going to do? We're going to say if uh, n is equal to zero. In other words, if we have to go zero further generations, then just take index from the array. We're interested in the seventh element when we get to that step. Otherwise, we need to uh, otherwise we need to step forward, and the way that we will do that is by calling level five of. Uh, why is it giving me an underline now? Oh, sorry, right, it's giving me an underline because I. Level five requires two arguments, and I haven't yet put those in. Fine, that's easy. Uh, so the new uh, starting array is seek step of the old array, and then the new n is n minus one because we've already gone one step forward, so we have n minus one steps left to go forward, just like the walk forward n steps. And that's it. That's the whole function. I'm going to sync that up, and then let's test it out uh, on this one here. I'll just close this so you can see the n as well. We'll say level five of this array. And this starting number gives me 3. And if I put it down there, 559, and carry it down, and it all checks out. So that's uh, that's the basic idea. There is a ton more that you can do with lambdas, with recursive lambdas, mutually recursive functions, all kinds of things. But, uh, you know, a little sort of sandbox problem like like one of these is a great way to get started. And if you compare this to, uh, you know, not to suggest that... Uh, not to suggest that anyone else was doing it a bad way, uh, I did it the same, but if you compare this to the way that most people would approach this, you know, you'd, you would have hundreds of helper columns sprawling across here, and that's what I did when I did it. Uh, and for level five, it wasn't even enough to have lots of helper columns. I had a whole separate sheet that, you know, spilled out one of these scenarios over, you know, 100 rows and 15 columns and and then pulled it back together and then did a data table. You know, the, the elegance of being able to do it this way is... Uh, there's a lot to be said for it. Uh, there is, to be fair, a trade-off in terms of auditability. So you know, be careful with that. If your if your end user uh, doesn't know how to you know read a lambda function and understand what's going on, especially a recursive lambda function, it's a little more advanced. You gotta you gotta manage that trade-off. But uh, it's, it's very very elegant and extremely reusable. Uh, you know, if this is a, a sort of business problem that you have in 15 different spreadsheets, you write that lambda. You know, you vet it, you vet it with whoever, you know, else you work with that needs to understand it. And then you've got it and you can reuse it forever. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.